Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat and welcome back to those who are returning for the physical Mass and also those who are uh, joining us in our worship through this live streaming. We are with the most difficult teaching, I think, of Jesus Christ. Love your enemies. And uh, it is not only just love your enemies, it says that love your enemies. And do good to them, do not curse them, etc. Human as we are, I think the first impulse is to get even. And uh, when we read this gospel, the first impulse actually is, well, as one author would say, what can we do with these words no, of Jesus? Delete them from the gospel? Kung kaya lang, eh, we will delete. Pwede bang mag, maglimos na lang ako, Father? Huwag lang yung to love and forgive the enemies. No? Or give free rein to our irritation. Perhaps we have to start by learning more about the process of forgiveness. It is important, first of all, I, to understand and accept the feelings of anger, rebellion, and aggressiveness that are born in us naturally. And I think it is normal that we have to own this. Now, that we are injured, that we are hurt. In order not to hurt ourselves even more, we need to regain much peace and inner strength as possible to help us react in a healthy way. The first thing, I think, the first decision of one who loves, who tries to love the enemy, the meaning of this, of course, the, is not to do, to take revenge. I know it is not easy, but I think this is the first meaning when the requirement of loving the enemy to remove from our estimations getting even revenge is the most instinctive response that comes from within when we are hurt or humiliated we seek to compensate for our suffering by making the other who has hurt us also suffer to forgive, it is important not to spend energy imagining our revenge. That's the first, I think, sense of this command of Jesus to love the enemy, to remove in our option uh, that getting even or making revenge. It is decisive above all not to feed our resentment that we do not allow our hostility and hatred to settle forever in our hearts. We have the right to justice. He who forgives does not have to waive his rights or her rights. The important thing is to heal from the damage that has been done to us. Another point here in this process of 
forgiveness which is at the core of loving the enemy is forgiveness takes time like any wound it doesn't heal overnight forgiveness is not an act of will that quickly fixes everything in general forgiveness is the end of the process that also involves sensitivity understanding lucidity and in the case of believers faith in God whose forgiveness we all live by whoever understands forgiveness in this way understands the message from being something impossible and irritating is the most accurate way to heal human relationships always threatened by our injustices and conflicts and one of the beautiful illustrations of this is the first reading that we have heard David could have killed her, his persecutor, King Saul, when he had the opportunity. Yet, he respected the king. He did not hurt him. And, I, and only to proclaim and uh, express his his message that he is not that he was not against the king that he was not thinking the evil for this king but only he was a faithful follower of his another thing that maybe we could could help us appreciate the teaching of Jesus regarding loving the enemies is the insight that we can get from the verb that Jesus uses here love your enemy in Greek according to scholars there are three or four uh, verbs to love so English kasi we have on love, love your, etc. For them, they make classification. They, they classify. There is the erotic love, meaning of lovers. Eros, no? that's where the erotic, the term erotic we use in English. Philane is the love between friends, no? non-sexual, etc. Another is what Jesus would use, and that is the agapain, a disinterested love, a love that is not based on feelings, not based on something that is, that is pleasing to you in the first place, but a love that is motivated because you think for the good of the other person, whether you you are you have that uh, feeling of uh, of care or what or nearness but rather this agape no that's the word we use also agape no to love no that is not based on feeling but rather what is truly good for that person and that is what Jesus used in this commandment, love your enemies. He was not using eros nor philane, but rather agape, meaning it is a love that is not based on what you feel, but rather thinking what is, what is good for that person. And maybe this would help us that, uh, to, uh, to clarify the, uh, the meaning of this 
words of Jesus of loving our enemies. In summary then, the Lord wants to root out all the violence that, is, that exists in the world and by precisely by going into the root of this uh, and that is the hate no, revenge that becomes a vicious circle many times this evil done to one is multiplied when there is revenge etc and with this commandment to do good and love the enemy Jesus wants to remove this and cut this root of violence in society and it can be done only in the spirit of this love as he would say and that is thinking really what is good for the other and we start this by acknowledging also our uh, the, the process that it needs to go through in order to attain this forgiveness dear friends as we come before the Lord today with all our own difficulties of loving and forgiving and understanding people we ask the Lord that he may strengthen us that we may have the courage also to uh, to do good to love by starting to pray to ask God's help that we may not resort into vengeance and to wish that person 